Welcome to this tutorial video on GChat Predictive's new web application equipment monitoring system. Uh, this application was designed especially for users of Vi Pro 6. So it talks directly to that application and allows you to post process all of the readings you took from your iPad right on your computer and nearly any computer. This runs on Internet Explorer 9 and above, Safari, Chrome, and Firefox. So let's get to this application. Uh, the first thing you'll notice about it is it looks very much like Vibe Pro. Uh, the, the layout here is uh, very similar. You have plants slash areas, machines, measuring points, and measurements. On the top here, you'll have the name of the application called Vibe Pro Viewer. Uh, you'll have File, View, Users, and Help. Um, some people will not have users depending on what your account is set up as. Uh, with File, you're able to import your database into this application. It's been a very important part of this process. So in that file import, you'll select which project you want to import to, choose the file, that is the SQLite file, which is probably in your Dropbox folder, and uh, then by per the database, which is where that's located, or you can drag it to your desktop from iTunes file sharing if you plug in via USB. You have printable output, which is grayed out right now. That'll be selectable if you have a Spectrum pulled up or some other uh, printable output. You have refresh, which you'll uh, select when you import a new database. And uh, some users will have add slash edit projects. This allows you to add multiple databases to your account. So um, the view area, we have Vibe Pro, which is where we're currently at. We have vibration data, which we'll get to in a little bit later. We have databases, which lets you download past uh, databases you've uploaded. And we have large spectrum, which we'll get to once again a little bit later. The help menu, we have help, which will pull up some help videos and documentation. We have about, and then preferences is something you'll want to select. Um, this allows you to change your name on this application, which would uh, reflect up there. You have the ability to change from CPM to Hertz. You have the ability to show bearing markers here, uh, RPM markers, which I currently have selected as two. And you're able to change the sorting from alphabetical to entry order. That is the order you entered it on your iPad. And it's probably the order you see it most often because that's the order that's on your iPad. So with that said, let's get to uh, some actual data and see how this all works. So the first thing you'll notice here is there's a lot of different color coding here. We have green, yellow, and red. This dot indicates the color of the last reading of that asset. So in test, we have uh, some machine in here asset that had a red reading as its last reading. Uh, the air conditioner is one example of this. If I click on the air conditioner, click on H1G, you'll notice the last reading is in the red. Um, if I click on the IPS one, you'll notice the last reading was in the green. So that's why that is colored green. Uh, let's now go to the bench grinder. And here, it's a green uh, machine, green asset. And if we go to this first reading here, uh, we've got a nice trend here. Lots of different readings. We have it uh, starting out a little bit above uh, the yellow there and then going, uh, spiking at the yellow at this reading here at 10 a.m. on December 4th, 2013. And if I select that reading, you'll uh, notice a couple things about it. First thing you'll notice on the right here is we selected the machine speed at 3600 RPM with the first peak at 3551 RPM. So that is an indication to me that we selected, uh, we selected what the advertised uh, running speed is, but in actuality, that's where we got as far as speed. Now, this spectrum is really small, really hard to see. So let's make that larger. If you go to view, large spectrum, that pops up the larger spectrum here. And we have these two wings here. We're able to move these in to view this in a more scaled version, which you can actually look at a little bit better here. So now that we're zoomed in, we've got these two RPM markers. We can also turn bearing markers, as I showed you before, if you would like. And we have this first peak here. And if I select that, I can click there, 0 0.1469 as the amplitude. And on the bottom here is the frequency. And this is just off of the um, running speed here. And you'll notice the second peak, once again, just off. So um, it is very accurate as far as the degrees that you're capturing here on your iPad. 
and then viewing it on, on this web application. Now, this cursor, besides marking the amplitude uh, on the chart here, on the spectrum, you'll see when you're on a, a point that in the top right, you'll also see the X value, the frequency. So currently that's set to 7182.3. Uh, so that is the uh, frequency right there. So you're able to uh, mark that, uh, the amplitude on the spectrum like that by just clicking, and you are able to reset that if you'd like. But uh, let's just get out of that. That's um, how you can see the spectrum in a larger uh, mode. And you can, of course, go to Preferences and show bearing markers and select up to four RPM markers or turn those off entirely. So let's exit that. Um, you'll notice here on the right this text box, lots of information there. You have the date and time of the capture. You have what your thresholds are set to, your calibration factor, your machine speed, as I mentioned before, your overall vibration, your top six peaks, and your bearing model. So in this case, the bearing model, the BFO ball pass frequency of the IR raceway was set to, that, uh, set to this value with the RPM uh, indicating right there. So all of the bearing model information is, is right here. We also have a pie chart, which indicates how many readings that asset had in the green, yellow, and red, which you can also see right here. There's also a picture of that uh, asset which is found right there. So that is that uh, measuring point in that spectrum and how you can access that and post-process that with a larger spectrum and turning on markers and such. Uh, if I select back here, I'm able to go back to the trend chart that we show, showed earlier. And we're also able to, uh, if I go back to that spectrum, I'm able, also able to print that out. So that's a printable output. If I select printable output, it'll pop up a new window in a printer-friendly mode that includes uh, both the trend chart and the spectrum, and it includes a photo of it and all of that data that was in that text box that you saw just a moment ago. So that is all available right there in the printable output. And we are working on adding an email option as well for those that want to be um, more eco-friendly or just the convenience of emailing uh, a report. Uh, next, let's get to a pretty cool part of this application and that is the total plant report. And if I click vibration data, we'll get into that. Uh, this vibration data area allows you to select all the plants or just one of your plants. I'm gonna do select all, and I'm gonna do show all machines. And you're able to have it show all your readings or just the last reading. So I'm gonna do just show the last reading. And let's do the default thresholds, which are the thresholds that you as a user set up in the route. So let's hit get data. And here we have a pie chart. And this pie chart indicates the health of your location. How healthy are the machines at your location? Uh, how many of those are currently in the yellow or red? These are all the last readings. So this means this is current data. We have 15 assets in the, in the yellow, 15 in the red, and those definitely need to be looked at. So this is very important information, very helpful information uh, that you can actually print and uh, soon email out to your superiors that need to know about this, uh, need to get people in there to fix this, um, these different assets. So this is a really helpful view, really helpful uh, mode in this application that I think a lot of people will get a lot of use out of. Uh, but once again, if you go file, printable output, you are able to print that out as a report, divides up all the different plants separately and uh, gives you a nice pie chart as well there. And pretty useful, once again, to share that data. So that those are the two main modes of this application. You have this mode here, and to get back to the ViPro, just select ViPro. Now, if you select uh, the databases here, you're able to download your SQLite file to put on your iPad if you don't have it already on there. So that is the web application by DTI Predictive Technology. If you have any questions about it, you can email us at info at gtipredictive.com. And more information is available at www.gtipredictive.com. Uh, thank you for watching this tutorial. And once again, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask.